Uh, normally, we, we open up with prayer, and we are going to pray, but because our guest today uh, has an obligation in about, uh, about 18 minutes, I want to get her right before you uh, and, and have her speak to you for 7 to 10 minutes and give you some time to ask any questions that you might have. She's obviously uh, the president and CEO of one of the premier organizations serving us as Christians, as believers, and serving this country as patriots. Um, I'm sure all of you know her and know of the organization Concerned Women for America. Uh, so without any extensive introduction beyond that, because obviously she's a very accomplished woman, please welcome Penny Nance. Penny, you have the floor, and uh, go right ahead. Take, like I said, seven to ten minutes, and then okay. if people have questions. And, folks, press star six. As soon as you have a question, get in queue because we won't have a lot of time to, to wait for you to, to get in line. Go right ahead, dear. Well, thank you, Bishop Jackson. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to the folks you've gathered here. Um, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you call this an emergency call because I believe that's accurate. You know, uh, our question before us is whether or not this country is going to remain the same constitutionally principled, freedom-loving country that our founding fathers fought for and died for on the bloody battlefields of Lexington and Concord and Boston and, you know, all those amazing historical places. You know, we are, some, we are becoming something less than what they originally um, gave us. And... It's for many reasons. Um, we know that we know that we have, uh, you know, a national debt of 17 trillion dollars. We know that we have aborted 55, 56 million babies since Roe v. Wade in uh, 1973. We know that our out of wedlock birth rate now is at about, um, you know, 43 percent. We're getting close to a tipping point there, and uh, and then of course that has the effect of you know hurting our children. The fact that we have children who grow up without a, a daddy in the home or a mom and a daddy together, whether it's through divorce or through they never married, they get sentenced to poverty, and no amount of you know the government checks can make up for the fact that there's a brokenness there and there's a sadness there and there's not the guidance that they need. And so, you know, I think as as a group of leaders, we've got to come together and just be honest about the brokenness in front of us and be honest about what the real issues are. As a conservative woman, it all I always find it a little surprising that when we when the feminists talk about this issue, that they refuse to acknowledge that there really is a problem with children being raised up without a, without a mom and a dad. Somehow, you know, if you admit that it's a two two people job, <laughs> that raising children is really hard all by yourself, that somehow that 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 you've uh, I don't know you're, you're a turncoat to your gender, and I just think that's not true. We've got to be honest about that. There's there's better some choices are better than others. And that, um, yes, life is very difficult, and it's not simple. It's complicated, and we are all broken. We all make mistakes. And just because you make mistakes don't, doesn't mean that you're sentenced to, uh, you know, a lifetime of destruction. It just means that it's harder for you, and it just means that as a community and as a church, we've got to come around and help and be honest about what are good choices and what are not good choices. Um, and so part of the, the issue with the war on women is really a rebellion, I believe, um, against the idea that, you know, we are made to be in community and in relationship and in families. And, yes, certainly there is um, wonderful, amazing women who um, who are single moms and do amazing work and are heroic and single dads too but it's a hard job and there's also sort of this rebellion against God's view of, of sexuality God's view of marriage um, and the fact that you know sex is beautiful and and God gave sanctioned it in scripture but sanctioned it within the context of holy matrimony and that when you know the the feminists in the 60s said 
we we don't need morality. We can make any decision that we want. We can sleep with whoever we want. We can behave as traditionally some men had behaved. And by the way, we need uh, we need abortion on demand because there's some fallout from that. That it's still sort of fighting that battle. The fact that you know what, when you make choices that that are not within the context of marriage, not within. Um, God's view of what's best for you there's 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 consequences and um and two wrongs don't make a right when you when you choose a, a choice or you're in a crisis pregnancy which you know sometimes happens within a marriage too by the way um you you cannot erase that issue by an abortion it hurts you as well as as you're hurting your child so Concern One for America right now um, is working on a, a paper. In fact, in fact, I've got it in front of me, so you guys are sort of getting the the early preview of it, talking about and fighting back on this war on women. It's really a war of perspectives, and it's a civil war, frankly, between women, in which women of faith are saying we believe one thing and women who um, are secular are saying another, and we are saying, you know, look, we do not want abortion on demand. We do not want the government or our tax dollars paying for abortion. And some of us, people who are, you know, I bring the, the example of the Little Sisters of the Poor, are saying, uh, you know, we're a group of nuns who take a vow of celibacy and poverty. We don't think we should have to pay for Sandra Fluke's birth control. And we say, you know what, we don't have a position on birth control, but we stand with women of faith. And with our Catholic friends who, you know, who have an issue of conscience, and we need to respect all of them. And so we're working to, to get the word out, and we're going to really put forth, I think, a, a very cogent, heavily documented paper that really talks about our worldview and the Christian worldview. And so that's what uh, Bishop Jackson Concerned Women for America has been doing for the past 35 years. We're the nation's largest public policy women's organization, and we stand in the public square and are, I think, prophetess, prophets in a way that, uh, you know, are, are giving the hard facts and the hard truth and uh, speaking up for our worldview and speaking on behalf of those who don't, opportun- don't have the opportunity, don't have the microphone in front of their face, but saying, look, this is, this is what we believe to be true. And so that's what we're going to be doing. All right. Well, Penny, thank you so much. Uh, folks, press start to get in queue to ask any questions and make any comments. Uh, look, I, I know what a wonderful organization Concerned Women for America is. My my wife has been active with you guys here, and, and, uh, and I have had people on my staff and others um, who have been very, very involved with Concerned Women for America. One of the things, Penny, that they the left has managed to do to us is convince many Americans, that the National Organization for Women and NARAL, Planned Parenthood, these sorts of organizations, they're for women. Mm-hmm. But these, quote, unquote, conservative organizations, they're really not for women. And women who support them are not really women. Just kind of like if you're mm-hmm. black and, and conservative, you're not really black. Mm-hmm. How do you combat that? And, and uh, do you see making some headway, particularly with new generations coming along, these younger generations coming along, who who you want to really sort of think through these issues as opposed to this knee-jerk liberal reaction. Right. Well, you're 100% about that. Somehow you're a traitor to your gender if you, you know, you stray from the party line of abortion on demand and um, and liberal, extreme liberal ideology on economics and so on and so forth. And uh, yes, I would equate it. Although I, I, I'm, I think that um, conservatives here, minority, maybe have even a little tougher than us. But yes, there's a special kind of hate <laughs> reserved from the left for conservative women. And uh, you know, people like Michelle Bachman and Michelle Ma- uh, Malkin and. Laura Ingram and others all get it. If you read their Twitter feed and, and you read my Twitter feed, what people say, it's things that I cannot repeat in the family call, <laughs> nor would I want to. Yeah. Um, but you know what? That's okay because when you have to resort to name calling, you've lost the argument. And we count it all joy that we can stand and speak for truth, and we're going to continue to do that no matter who it bothers. 
Um, you know, today I am going to Capitol Hill to talk to some Republican leadership about the Women's History Museum. There's a there's a group of women who are working to get a Women's History Museum placed on placed on the mall. And I would say that that might be a great idea. That's let's talk about that. What I can't allow ha happen, however, which is you know how it's being set up to to work, is that it's going to be a platform to educate our young kids in liberal ideology, abortion on demand, and, uh, you know, really a platform just for the left. That's not how that can work because there are at least half of America, at least half of women, over half of women are pro-life. In fact, we're winning when the, in those numbers. Uh, as much as the other side hates it, we actually are winning this debate. In fact, Time Magazine said at the 40th anniversary of Roe, that, you know, of course, abortion advocates won a huge victory with Roe, but they've been losing every day since. Now, they've been losing incrementally. We have a very, very long way to go, but we're making huge progress in the states. Public opinion is on our side, and the other side is desperate to take that away from us, and we're not going to let them do it.